Alright, check this out. What's your nationality, brother? I like your answer. What about you? What's your nationality? Isaiah 1 and 3. Check this out. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. I want y'all to pay close attention. We're not out here for us. We're out here for our brothers and sisters, alright? Watch this. Isaiah 1 and 3. Read what you got. Isaiah 1 and 3. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Read what you got. Isaiah 1 and 3. Read what you got. Isaiah 1 and 3. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. So the Bible says the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today, these are the people walking around saying, I don't know my nationality. When you say, hey, I come from Africa, you ask them what? What country in Africa do you come from? I don't know. I asked my brother, okay, who are you? I don't know. We the people. What does that mean? I don't know. Read it again from the top. Watch this. Isaiah. We're going to show you. We're going to show you, brother. You just got to be patient, all right? Watch this. Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel, but Israel, does not know. The Israelites don't know. So, I'm going to speed it up for you. Give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. So, when it comes to the nation of Israel, you have 12 tribes, right? Now we're going to read about the skin complexion of one of the tribes. Watch this. You ain't never heard this in your Christian church before, I guarantee you. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah mourning. It says who mourning? Judah mourning. Read on. And the gates thereof language. Meaning what? We had horrible leaders. Our leaders are the ones who led us into damnation, into slavery. Right. Read it again for the top. Right. Judah mourning. And the gates thereof language. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black Read. unto the ground. The same color as that dirt. The tribe of Judah is black unto the ground. Now, that's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Read out. The King James Bible. You just you just never heard it. Because you gotta understand. Give me Isaiah 29 and 13. Watch this. We've been taught wrong. Right. We've been taught wrong. We've been lied to. We've been told that that's Jesus Christ and that God is white, the angels are white. That's not in the Bible. All right? Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Uh -huh. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their... So it says, for as much as this people, meaning what? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. Read on. Draw near me with their mouth. How do we draw near to God with our mouth? By doing what? Going to Sunday church every Sunday, putting our hands together. As soon as we leave, we do it all manner of evil. Day in, day out. Not keeping God's commandments. Read. With their mouth and with their lips do honor me. We talk a good day, but in our hearts, in our actions, we don't love God. Meaning what? We don't do what he says. Read. But have removed their heart far from me. And, the fear, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. And it says, our fear towards God is taught by the precepts of men. Which men? Look at this. They forced that image on our people. And if we did not accept that image, they put us to death. Understand that thing. Who put us in slavery? My brother right here. Who put us in slavery? Brother, stop it. Stop it, bro. Hey, where, where, where I get this right here from, though? I, uh, what made that come to that conclusion? Give me Ezekiel chapter 37 and 15. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15. He said, where did we get this information from? It was actually commanded by the Most High God. It's a commandment that we put this together. Watch, watch this. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it, for Judah and the children of Israel is companions. So, the Bible commands us to say, hey, take one stick, right, and write upon it, read, for Judah and, and the children of Israel. So you at the southern kingdom, which consists of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and his companions, read, and his, his companions. Then take another stick uh -huh. and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel. And for all the house of Israel, talking about the northern kingdom of Israel, which makes the northern ten tribes. Ephraim on down. 
That's where we get this sign. It was commanded, prophesied through the prophet Ezekiel to do that. Right. So, in the last days, when we are scattered in our various captivities, give me Deuteronomy 28 and 46. Bring it out. Watch this. This was prophesied and that in the last days our people will come back to our true nationality. Right. Understand this thing. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. Uh -huh. And they shall come upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So it says the curses, the atrocities that happen to our people, they will be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. Now, you ask this question. You say, how did you come to that? We just went to the scripture. Now, when it says the curses that will be upon the Israelites will be upon them for a sign and for a wonder, what does a sign do for you, brother? What, is it, what does it do? Yeah, a, a sign. This will be a sign. What, what does that do for you? That's a sign. It shows you something. It leads you. Exactly. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. Watch this. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. We're going to go over some of the curses that happen to our people and nobody else. That's how in 2018 you're able to read this Bible and come to the realization that you are an Israelite. Understand this. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance. Shall do what? Discontinue from thy inheritance. It says discontinue from thy inheritance. Now, if there was a white man up here and I asked him his nationality, he would say, yep, you know my people, they're from Poland. All right? You ask a so-called Arab, he'll tell you where he's from. You ask a Chinese man, he'll tell you where you're from. But when it comes to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, I don't know. Read the verse again. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. God gave us our heritage. Have you ever heard of God's chosen people? Who are they? The Israelites. Guess what? Give me 2 Chronicles 6 and 6. Watch this. Second Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 6. We all come from the same. We all family, right? Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all family. We all came from Yeah, yeah, yeah. I touched that too. But there's divisions and there's distinctions as well. You got to understand that. And I also thought that um, if you listen to if you follow one law, you got to follow all the laws. That's correct. Right? Yeah. If you follow one law, you gotta follow all the laws. That's like, correct. Jesus Christ came in. He did away with the law of sacrifice. Exactly. Law of sacrifice, yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. Watch this. Read what you got. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 6, verse 6. We're still going with that chosen people. Then we can go to the law. We can get into that too. Watch this. But I have chosen Jerusalem. God has chosen who? Jerusalem. He didn't choose every nation. Understand that God, he created every nation, but everybody is not God's chosen people. Understand that first and foremost. Read this. That my name might be there. That his name might be where? My name might be there. Might be there. Meaning what? In Jerusalem, which is the nation of Israel. Read. That's it on that. And have chosen David to be over my people. Over what? Over my people. My is a possessive word, meaning what? Hey, there's a lot of people there, but that's my son. Yeah, and I know them. They some cousins. They some good people. But no, that's my son. Understand that. Give me Exodus 4 and 22. Bring it up. You have to understand that thing. Yes, God created everybody, but hey, everybody ain't equal. Right. You have to understand that. That's why he says God's chosen people. All right, read this. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 22. Uh -huh. and, thou shalt, and thou shalt say to, unto Pharaoh, this said the Lord, Israel is my son. Is my what? Is my son. Is my what? Is my son. Even my firstborn. Even my firstborn. So out of all the families on the face of the earth, God is only dealing with one people. That's right. That's what you got to understand. Now. I'll go deeper because you said we all come from the same, which is correct. We come from Adam, right? Watch, give me that in second edge of six. Watch this. The Bible's going to say that exact thing, and I'm agreeing with you, but there's more to it. All right? Watch this. Second edge of six, start at 54. You got it? Second edge. The book of second edge. Chapter 6, verse 54. Second edge. Okay. Show this. Second Have you heard of the prophet Ezra? 
You never heard of Ezra? That's in the that's in the normal canon. Ezra, right before Nehemiah. Ezra and Nehemiah in the Bible. Yeah, that's who this is. Ezra. It's just the Greek pronunciation. All right. Give me that. Second Ezra chapter six verse fifty four. Read it out of the Apocrypha. This was removed by the Protestant Church in the late 1700s. Right. They deemed it not uh, inspired by God. But we're going to get some understanding to show why they removed it. Read what you got. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Uh -huh. And after these, Adam also, whom thou made Lord of all thy creatures. Of him come we all. So the Bible says, of him come we all. That's what you just said, and I agree. Read. Read. And the people also whom thou had chosen. So it says, all nations, kindreds, and tongues come from Adam and the people that God has chosen. Already he's making a distinction. Read. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. For whose sake? For our sake. So you have to understand, just like you got different pairs of shoes in your closet, you got a favorite pair. All right, you have to understand, God made this world. He got different people in it, but he actually made it for our sakes, the Israelite sakes, because the other nations, they have a purpose, but their purpose ain't the same as ours. Read. And as for the other people, as for who? The other people, Read on. which also come of Adam, what does God say about them? Thou hast said that they are nothing. That they are what? Nothing. Read on. But like unto spittle. Like unto what? Spittle. What is spittle? It's spit. Out of your mouth. You know what that is? Yeah, that's what spittle is. Spittle. It's S P I T T L E. Everybody uses spit. Compared to the nation of Israel. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. Now, just in case you don't like it coming out of here, give me Isaiah 40 and 17. Yeah. Give me Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. It says it all throughout the Bible. It's just that you have to understand. Who taught us how to read and write? Think about it. Who taught you how to read and write? The white people. Who taught us religion? Yes. Keep going. Say it again. The white people. They taught us something, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Who taught us Christianity? Christianity. Who taught us Christianity? Stop it. Stop it, brother. Who taught us Christianity? Can't really say. Who? The preachers. Okay. So let's go to, hmm, 1619. Who taught us Christianity? If we could not read or write in English, who taught us Christianity? I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to argue, but I'm just, when you get real, our people be like, uh, no, but the take Bible a second. Been, but the Bible been around. It has, exactly. I love what you're saying, brother. You have to understand. What we bring it out right now, Christianity will never teach you who you are. They'll never teach you that the Israelites are black. But the Bible's been around for centuries. But guess what? You've been taught wrong. And Christ warned us. Give me Colossians 2 and 8. Bring it out. Watch this. Now you're going to, there you go. Don't go to that. That's the, that's the work of Satan. Do not go to it. Colossians 2 and 8. Watch this. Watch this. The book of Colossians. Chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So the Bible's telling us, it says, hey, beware. That means, hey, you need to look out. Because it's, it's going to come a time when some people on the earth, they're going to lie to you. All right, read it again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Read. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of who? Of men. After who? The tradition of men. So you say, hey, Christianity, yeah, they taught us that, but the Bible's been around for centuries. Guess, guess what? Christianity is a doctrine and a commandment of men. Understand that. Read. And after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And not after who? And not after Christ. And not after Christ. Now, give me Acts 11 and 27. We're going to show you who the real Christians are, according to the Bible. Bring it up. Watch this. I'm going to deal with you. But we we, we, we connect right. I'm going to deal with you, bro. Watch this. Acts 11 and 27. We're going to see who the real Christians are. Bring it up. If, if the word Christian, or did we have Christians before Christianity with white man Jesus? Right. All right? I thought that Christian, Christian was like somebody, people that believe in Christ. That's exactly right. Now, guess what? I'm glad you said that. After the scripture, we're going to dive a little deep. Remember your thought. Watch this. Acts chapter 11, verse 27. In those days came prophets from 
Jerusalem and to Antioch. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. All right, read that. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians. The disciples were called what? Christians first in Antioch. The disciples were what kindred? Oh, I'm sorry, what nation? They were Israelites, come from Jerusalem, and they were called Christians. These are the true Christians of the Bible. Now you, Acts 11, 26 and 27. Acts chapter 11, verse 26 and 27. All right, these are the real Christians according to the Bible. Now, you said that you thought Christians were people who believe on Christ, right? That's correct. Now, did anybody ever see Christ? Yeah, back in the days. What do you think he looked like? It says in the Bible. It clearly says in the Bible that he's black. It clearly says in the Bible that he's black. All right. Now check this out. You said Christians are those who believe on Christ. So who's that? Somebody they made up. Somebody they made up. So showing you what? If the whole world is following white man Jesus, are they Christians? No, exactly. Give me that in John as the scripture has said. Was it John 7, 38? Well, you said that have an image. Bring it out. Watch this, watch this. Now, okay, you say image. Okay, so after this, we are going to go to the correct image they should have. All right? Watch this. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said. As the what? As the scriptures have said. So, my brother, can we find anywhere in the Bible where it says that Christ is a Caucasian with stringy hair and blue eyes. We can't, we can't read that. We cannot find it. But what we can find is the true depiction of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 1. And that's what we're going to read. Watch this, all right? Revelation chapter 1 and start at verse 1. Watch this. The Re Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Of who? Jesus Christ. The root word for revelation is what? To reveal. That's what it means. So we're reading the revealing of who? Jesus the Christ. All right? Um, jump up to verse 11, I believe it is. What thou seest right in the book. Read that. Say. Call it. Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. Say, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. And what thou seest, write it down in a book. So, this is John the Revelator. This is Christ revealing himself to John. And Christ told him, hey, what thou seest, write it down in a book. And that's the book we're reading right here. All right? Give me verse 13. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. One like unto who? The Son of Man. The Son of Man is who? Jesus the Christ. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And girt about the pump pimp, pimp with a girdle, a golden girdle. And his head and his hair were white like wool. It says his head and his hairs were white like wool. So the hair on his head and the hairs on his face were white like wool. Now let me ask you this, my brother. Is wool a color or a texture? A what? Exactly. Read that again. And his head or in his head and his hair were white like wool. So showing what the Messiah had what texture hair? Wooly hair. Just like yourself. Just like my brother right next to you, just like all of us standing right here. Read. Read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now it says the Messiah's eyes were as a flame of fire. Is that talking about something out of a Marvel comic? No. We're going to show you the prophecy on why that came to pass. Give me that in Genesis 49. Genesis 49 and 12. It was prophesied that the Messiah would have eyes red like wine or flames of fire. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 12. Uh -huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. His what? His eyes shall be red with wine. Go back to Revelations. Watch this, watch this. So we're just dealing with as the scriptures say. We're trying to find those real Christians out there. We find a, we're trying to find those who want to actually follow the real Messiah, not this imposter. All right, read what you got. In his, in his eyes. Call it and read it. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 And his head and his hairs were white like wool 
as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. What color? And like unto fine brass. We all educated, we grown up here. What color is brass? Brown, Brown right? All right, so this brother's complexion, right? Let's read on, read. As if they burn in a furnace. As if what? They burn in a furnace. So he started off this brother's complexion and ended up what color? You and me, dark. dark. As if they were burnt in a furnace. So guess what? What we just read, bro, is a true depiction of Jesus Christ. He a black man with woolly hair just like you. Understand that thing. Let's go back to Jeremiah 14 and 2 because guess what? We can't hear these scriptures enough because we ain't never heard them before. Right. We are an oppressed people. Right. Understand that thing and we like to trust in oppression. But today's a new day. There is a, what'd you say? Yeah, that's an idol. That's a false image. That is a false image. If you worship it, are we bound down to worship it? No. That's a depiction to do what? Educate the mind and transform the minds of our people. That's right. From this false image to the correct depiction. Right. Holy right. hair, dark skin, like the Bible says. Right. Be what you got. I want you to listen to this. Because guess what? Jesus Christ is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. And this is what his people look like. I want y'all to hear this thing. Read this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah mourning, and the gates thereof language. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. Read it again. Judah morning and the gates are of language. Now I want y'all to look right here. The so-called African-American blacks make up the tribe of Judah today, according to the scriptures. Say that the black Americans is from Judah. Oh, praise to the most high. You asking the right questions. That's Give me Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. We're gonna get to it. Watch this. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. That's what I'm talking about. I can tell you that's you like you like, hold on. That's a sincere question. But guess what? This ain't of our agenda. This is in the Bible. And we that's why we come out here to the street corners to bring it out to you. Alright, watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 1. Uh-huh. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last day. In the what? In the last day. So, our forefather Jacob, which name was changed to what? Israel. He gathered all of his sons together. And he said, hey, this is what's going to happen to you in the last days. Jump up to 7 or 8. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 7. Curse be their anger. So the eight. The book of forty nine um, book of Genesis, chapter forty nine, verse eight. Judah, thou art whom thy brother shall praise. So the Bible says, Judah, thou art whom thy brethren shall praise. Meaning what? Judah is the lead tribe of the nation of Israel. All of the other brethren shall praise Judah because Judah will, will lead the, re the reviving of the nation. You will see Judah on the street corners educating the people unto who they are in the last days. Read on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy, thine enemy. It says, Thine hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Now, think about it. Who has power over the world today? What nation of people? Who's the superpower on the earth today? Who's the superpower? What's the greatest nation on the face of the earth right now? You got it. The white man, United States of America. Read it again from the top form. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brothers shall pray. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Showing what? In the last days, the tribe of Judah will be predominantly where? In the neck of our enemies, a.k.a. the United States of America. We are right here, hand to hand, with the so-called white man. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Thy father's children going into Ephraim, Naphtali, Manasseh, all the other tribes will bow down because why? We're giving them the understanding of the scriptures. We are the leaders of the nation of Israel. We fit the depiction in the last days. So all we do is what? We go by the scriptures and we understand. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 64. I want you to listen close. Watch this. I'm going with what you said, and we're going to build off of that. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, 
chapter 28, verse 64. Huh? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Now, I want to touch on the differentiation of some of the tribes. Give me that in Malachi uh, 3 and 8. Malachi 3 and 8. All right? Now, in regards to the tribe of Levi, all right? This is another tribe. How do we know that the Levites aren't the Judites today? All right? Watch this. That's what I want. Malachi chapter 2, verse 8. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi. Corrupted the covenant of Levi. You seem like you have some background on the Bible. What were the Levites known for? The praise God. It was the, um, the priest. The priest, exactly. Read it again from the top. Watch this. But ye have departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi. Read on. Said the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you con contemptible. Contemptible and base before all the people. Contemptible and base before all the people. So, according to the scriptures, the Levites in the last days are the so-called Haitians. Because when it comes to this side of the earth where we've been scattered, they're base and contemptible compared to their brothers in Jamaica, compared to their brothers in the uh, in the Bahamas, compared to their brothers here in the United States of America. When you go down the list in Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33, it gives you a clear depiction on who we are in the latter days. Now, let's go all the way back. Deuteronomy 28, 46. We're going over basics tonight because this is what our people need. They're base and contemptible, meaning what? A co Compared to all the other brothers, they're on the bottom. They're the poorest country. Although they got the independence, they're out there eating dirt cookies till this day. They are robbed and spoiled. They are very low compared to us. So, according to the scriptures, Levi, that was the prophecy. Guess what? The so-called Haitians fit that prophecy today. That's what I said, brother. All right, read what you got. But when, you, when the Haitians come over here, they prosper. Said now let me ask you something, brother. Is is one man or a few families prospering? Think about it. Let's say if I hit if I hit the lottery and I'm successful. As a people, are we prospering? No. What I'm saying is, because in Haiti they don't have as much. So when they get an opportunity to come over here right. to better themselves, right. they So my point was, can one man rise above his nation or his people? No. So guess what? That may be one, that may be two, that may be 500. But guess what? As a whole, his people, you understand, right? All praises to the Most High. What I call? 4046, watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. Uh -huh. and, that, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So why are we going through these curses tonight? We're going through these curses, so guess what? We can wake up and realize we're not black. We're not African Americans. Right. We're right. Israelites. We right. understand that. Hey, this Bible is talking about us. Right. Understand that thing. Give me the book of um, Psalm 62 and 10, and then Lamentations 4. Watch this. Psalm 62 and 10. What our problem is is that we love to assimilate. We love to look the other way. We want to join with the other nations instead of what standing up for our people. Right. That's our biggest problem. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 62 and verse 10. Trust not in oppression. So the Bible says, trust not in oppression. Who put us in slavery? What people? You. What people put us in slavery, bro? The white. The white people. It's obvious, right? You don't got to be scared to say it's the truth. The, the Bible says this. Watch. Trust not in oppression. So the Bible says, trust not in oppression. Read. And become not vain in robbery. And become not vain in robbery. Give me Ecclesiastes 5 and 8. I want to touch on something real quick. Y'all wonder why we being oppressed, right? Y'all wonder why we always on the short end of the stick. How come we can't rise above? Guess what? We are cursed people because we fell from God's commandments. We disobeyed the Most High, and He's punishing us right now. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 8. Uh-huh. 
If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment. It says, if you see the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment, how do they violently pervert the judgment? Trayvon Martin, Freddie Gray. These are people who were killed, they were murdered, but they're their murderers walk free. The Bible says, marvel not at the at the matter. Why would God say not to think it's strange? Why would God say, hey, look at the oppression of your people. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't think it's strange. That's supposed to happen. Why would God say that? It's prophesied. Why do you think God would allow his own people, his own chosen people to get gunned out in the streets? Why do you think he would allow that to happen? Why else? Why else? You right. What's going on in the world? What else? What else is more to it? Why do you think God would let his own people's blood spill in the streets? Why would he let us? To show us what? Signs that the days come to pass. And what else? What else? What else? Come on, y'all right there. Think about it. Think about it. If God. Go ahead. Okay. God hasn't chosen people who established that. That's the Israelites. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. Now, you see the oppression in the, in, the, in the world today. How we get mistreated. How we still get gunned down in the streets, right? Why do you think God would allow that to happen? Think about it. It, it, it just made me ask me more questions. Okay, now we're going to answer. Give me Hosea 5 and 15. Bring it up. Hosea 5 and 15. We're just going to go to the Bible. Because I want y'all to realize the Bible is the solution. The Bible has all our answers. Right. We've just been taught wrong. Right. The Christian church will never teach you the Bible correctly. Yes. Because they have nothing to do with this Bible. It's only for the Israelites. Yes. All right, read what you got. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Uh -huh. I will go and return to my place. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. Till they do what? Till they acknowledge their offense. So the Most High will allow our blood to continue to be spilled until we do what? Till they acknowledge their offense. We have to come back to who we are. We can't make it to the kingdom of heaven as African Americans, right. as niggas, right. as spicks. Right. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, there's one third. Give me that in Zechariah. Only one third of Israel's gonna make it. You have to understand. The Most High God, He's gonna put a lot of us to death because of our wickedness. Because there's gonna be a lot of brothers and sisters that hear this word and they still ain't gonna do it. And they gotta die for that thing. Give me that in Zechariah 13. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. How many parts? Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So you have to understand that thing. My brothers, give me that in um, Matthew 24. All right, 24 and uh, 14. You have to understand, that's why we out here on the street corners. We out here to get the elect. We out here to get that one third that was promised from the beginning. We understand that a lot of our people, they're going to continue to drive by and they're going to get put to death. That's not why we out here. We are out here for the one third. First and foremost, that's what I want. Okay, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14. Uh -huh. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. A witness unto all nations, read. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. Now, we've been paying attention. I know you have, bro. Now think about it. You said it out of your own lips earlier. But I'm going to ask a question. I want to see if you can put it together. Now, I want you to read the scripture again. Pay close attention. I'm going to ask you the question. Read this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. In all the what? In all the world. For a witness unto all nations. Unto what? For a witness unto all nations. So, why do you think God said that the gospel had to be preached unto all nations? Because who? His people scattered across earth. Uh, Who's his Israel. people? Israel. There you go. Yes. The Israelites. Yes. James 1 and 1. Now you understand, hey, you know what? Christianity got that thing wrong. They say all nations can be saved. All nations can be grafted in. No. The most I said, go teach to all the other nations. Because why? His people are scattered in all these other nations. Right. Read what you got. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. You ever heard of the apostle Paul? 
he was an apostle of the Gentiles, right? Right. But who are those Gentiles? Think about it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Read what you got. James chapter 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Which are what? Which are scattered abroad. Which are scattered abroad. So, you said who are the Gentiles, right? So, let's get the proper understanding of Gentiles tonight. Starting off, 1st Ezra 869. We're going to show you majority of the time what Gentiles mean. Because the Gentile people mean someone outside of the nation of Israel. That's what it means, right? Watch this. 1st Ezra 8 and 69. All right, we're going to get one of the definitions. Read what you got. 1st Ezra chapter 8 verse 69. The nation of Israel, the princes and the priests, and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land. The strange people of the land, meaning what? Those who are outside of the nation of Israel. Those are the strange people. Don't call them Gentiles as well. Watch this. Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles, Read. To wit of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Pharisees, the Jebusites, and the Moabites. So those are, are the nations outside of the nation of Israel, right? Now, when we get to the New Testament, a lot of people just keep that understanding, right? They just say, hey, that has to be talking about the other nations. Give me 1 Corinthians 12 and 2 real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. We're going to get some understanding of what Paul is talking about. What was his ministry? All right? Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Now, Paul said... I want y'all to catch his wordplay. Watch this. Read it again slow. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Hold on, hold on. I want y'all to focus. They can go on do what they got to do. I want you to focus to how he's saying it right now. Read it again. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Now, how can you formally be a Gentile? And then, now you're not a Gentile. Because that's what he said. So that's like, hmm. Yeah, that is kind of different, right? Come up. Where you at? Read this. Read the definition of Gentile in the Zondervan Bible Compact Dictionary. Read that. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Gentiles. Usually. Wait, wait. Read it again. Gentiles. Usually. Usually means what? Does that mean all the time? It means sometimes, right? Read. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. It says, usually, it means a non-Israelite people. Right. You see that, right? So that means there's going to be a point in time in the Bible where it says Gentile, and it doesn't mean the actual Gentiles of the other nations. Now, go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. I want you to pay real close attention. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. This is close. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. So let's find out, it says, that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Give me Hosea 4 and 17. What is it talking about? Ye were Gentiles. Ye were Gentiles. What is it talking about? Watch this. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idol. Who is joined to idols? Ephraim is joined to idol. Wait, wait, wait. Who's joined to idols? Ephraim is joined to idol. Read. Let him alone. Now, can anybody find Ephraim on his 12 tribes chart? That's part of what? The nation of Israel. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. Read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. What did we just read? We just read that the northern kingdom of Israel are the Gentiles in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. That's what we just found out. So when he says he's an apostle of the Gentiles, yeah, he's an apostle of the nation of Israel. That's what he's saying, all right? Now, you said something earlier about the law. Remember the uh, Christ came and did away with the law? Remember that? All right, give me that Matthew 5 and 17. Let's get some understanding on that, all right? Because that, there's, there's another doctrine in the earth that what? God's laws are done away with. We can do whatever we want. That's Okay, clear it up for us. That's what I was, I was saying that if you, got, you follow, if you follow, if you um bound by one law, you got to follow all the laws, right? Give me that in James 2 and 10. That's what you're quoting. We're going to read it real quick. 
Watch this. Let me give you some understanding of what it's talking about as well. James 2.10. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 10. Book of James, chapter 2, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. That's what you're talking about right there. It says if you keep the law and offend at one point, you're guilty of all. Now, start at verse 1. I'm going to give you the context, and then we're going to jump back into the actual law. Watch this. Read what you got. James, chapter 2, verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of person. With what? With respect of person. So the chapter is going into being partial with your brothers and sisters. That's what it's going into. So when it says you keep the whole law, but then you show favoritism, but then you treat your brother who is poor like crap. That means what? You offended, you broke all of it because you're being partial. That's the context of that. Now, I want to deal with the law of righteousness, which is keeping God's commandments. Now, give me Matthew 5, 17. It's more than just 10 commandments. Exactly. There you go. It's way more than just 10. So if you, if you, if you break one law, or you break them all, you go to hell. If you don't repent from it, brother. That's why we out here. We, boy, give me Titus 3 and 3. I was on this side. I'm saying though, because there's a lot of laws, like, like sacrifice. Right. We don't sacrifice, Christ did. We don't touch that. I just, just, we gotta breathe. Just breathe, just breathe. Watch this. Watch this, just breathe real quick. I want you to listen to the scripture, and we're gonna break every component down, all right? Watch this. Watch, listen to the Bible. Listen to the Bible. Watch this, listen to the Bible. All right, read what you got. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. So, according to the Bible, foolish means breaking God's commandments. That's what foolishness means. Now, the Bible just said we ourselves, meaning what? Myself, this brother, this brother, so on and so on. At one point, we used to break God's commandments. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived. Serving diverse lust. Serving diverse lust that went against the commandments of God. Read. Read. And pleasures. Living in malice and envy. Living in malice and envy like we see in the hood all day. Our brothers gunning each other down. Read. Hateful and hating one another. Read. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. So, but guess what? Something happened. We heard the scriptures, we hearken to the scriptures, and we change our lives according to the scriptures. Now, give me Acts 8 and 27. It's a process, meaning what? Yeah, there's a lot of laws. Are you going to learn all of them tomorrow? Probably not. But it's a process. you got to learn them just like I had to learn, just like the next man had to learn. It's a process. Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 27. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia and Enoch, of great authority under Chandace, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem. Up to verse 30. Verse 30. Uh -huh. And Philip ran thither to him. So he ran to this brother's chariot. That was a Jew that was scattered in Ethiopia. He ran to his chariot, read, <laughs> and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. So, and just, you know what? I, I don't mind breaking it down for you. Hold it. Give me Zephaniah 3 and 10. Just so you can understand why I just said what I said. You had a Jew that was scattered in Ethiopia. Because our people are scattered everywhere. But I'm going to go to the Bible to prove my statement. All right, watch this. Read what you got. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplements, even the daughter of my dispersed. The daughter of his what? My dispersed. Show what? We've been scattered everywhere, even Ethiopia. All right? Go back. Acts 8 and 30. Watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 30. And Philip went thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah is the prophet Isaiah. All right? So he's, you had a Jew struggling with the prophet Isaiah. He didn't understand what it was saying. But Philip saw him. He said, you know what? Let me go to his chariot. Read. And said, understandest thou what thou readest? So he asked him, hey, do you understand? Are you able to follow the law? Watch what he says. Read. And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? He said, how can I, except some man should guide me? Meaning what? Somebody has to teach you. You have to be taught. Just like I was taught, it's a process. And then guess what? Day by day, you're going to learn true repentance. Right. Before we get to that, 
Give me the book of Acts 319, and then give me Numbers 15 and 38. This is something you can do tonight. You can go to the store and repent tonight by this one law. Read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. The Bible says repent and be converted. Convert means to what? Change, right? Read. That your sins may be blotted out. So, do y'all know what sin is? What sin? Uh, better. I want, I want a little bit better. Give me, what you got? What sin? You said what? Misguidance. Misguidance? What you got? Uh, like drinking, smoking weed. Not, okay. Not following the commandments. Not following the commandments. Follow the commandments. Follow the Watch this. Now we're going to read it out of the Bible. Watch this. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. So right now, you're in transgression of a law. All right, now I'm going to show you the actual law that you should be keeping. Watch this, Numbers 15 and 38. We're going to show you the law that you should be keeping. Read this. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. Which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's what we're doing. We're speaking to y'all. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. They make them fringes in the borders of their garment. Read. Throughout their generation. Throughout their generations means forever. As long as the Israelites are living, that means we must have fringes on. Right. And around the fringes, what should we have? And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. Remember what? Remember all the commandments of the Lord. All of the commandments of the Lord. So Sean, what? It's not just 10. But guess what? This one law helps you keep all of the commandments. That's right. You understand that, right? You, you're starting to understand that. You, you under now, that, we just went to the law and read a commandment, right? Yeah. Now, how do you repent? You must start keeping God's commandments. So if you want to repent from not wearing fringes, what do you got to do? You got to start wearing fringes. Right. Exactly. Now give me uh, Leviticus 18.22. This is another This is another law that plagues our people. A big law that plagues the black and Hispanic man and woman. Watch this. The book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Read it again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. What's that called? Yes. Being gay. Exactly. Now. If somebody wanted to convert from that, what would they have to do? Stop. Stop sleeping with men. Stop being gay. Exactly. But guess what? This is what's going to heal our nation right here. Right. The laws of God. That's the only thing that can get us out of our situation. Right. We tried every. We tried politics. We tried marching. We tried everything. We had a black president. We still in the hoods and the ghettos. It ain't do nothing. Right. right. Because guess what? God put us in this situation. And the most high, he's the only one that's going to get us out of it. That's right. Understand that thing first and foremost, brothers. That's why we out here. We came out here to, hey, we searching. We out here being fishers of men. All right? And this is what we teaching. Matthew 4, 17. This is what we teaching at the end of the day. Get out. Read what you got. Matthew 4, 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Most High is about to bring judgment on this earth. Right. I'm going to let you know that straight. Guess what? You ever read Revelations, Mystery Babylon? This is the daughter of Babylon. This is it. Right. This place will be destroyed by nuclear missiles. Right. That's prophesied in the Bible. Now, knowing that... It would be in your best interest to do what, hey, all right, I just learned I was an Israelite today. I was learning I was God's chosen people. Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Bring it up. So I need to how learn. You, Go ahead. How do you know this doctor that you're teaching that, that was taught to you is the right doctor? Oh, give me my first one too. I'm going to 
I'll show you. Proverbs 4 and 2. We're going to go to the Bible. He asked me, how do I know? Watch this. Proverbs 4 and 2. He ain't speaking no scriptures. But we coming out the Bible on every day. Understand this. It's written in the Bible, so we're going to bring it out. What you got? Listen, hey, was a wife. Focus on the Bible, bro. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. Read it again. For I give you good doctrine. Read Forsake ye not my law. That's how I know we're teaching the right doctrine. Because we're teaching you to keep God's laws. Right. That's right. But it is. Ch ch churches teach you nothing. No, they don't. No, they don't. Some, some churches do. So, okay. So, have you ever seen a church do all of this? Check this out. Have you ever seen a church? All at the same church. Now, you be honest with me. Have you ever been to a church? that only goes to church on Saturday, which is the Sabbath. Have you ever seen a church where that pastor have his full grown beard? Have you ever seen a church where they have fringes in a border of blue? Have you ever seen a church where the, uh, the pastor not sleeping with the members? Right. Have you ever seen a church where they don't eat pork? Right. Have you ever seen a church that actually teaches out of the Bible, precept upon precept? Right, right. So you said, you think pork, but that's, that's the thing, that's not what Jesus Christ come in at. That's what Jesus Christ come in at. Oh, 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 you see, I knew it was in him. I knew it. Watch this. We're going to go to the scriptures, and I want you to hold on to that, and we're going to deal with it. You say, that's what Jesus Christ come in at. Please hold that. I got to answer this question first. I'm coming right back for you. I knew that was in you still. Watch this. <laughs> the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, so he divided the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So it says the swine is unclean to you, read. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Read that again. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Hey, that's self-explanatory. Now, you said well, hold on, hold that's on, when on, Christ on. comes in. <laughs> okay, read, it, read, read it verse eight again, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Read it again. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 8 Of their flesh shall ye not eat It says of the swine's flesh Meaning flesh means their body Now when it says not to eat of their flesh That means don't have any pig sheep right. Don't have any hog moths right. Don't have any baby back ribs right. Don't eat no bacon, right. no pork chop right. That's what it means Of their flesh shall ye not eat That's, right. That's what it means What'd you say? Isaiah 55 and 8. Hold on, what did it say? Isn't that a verse in the Bible that says when he was on uh, somebody had, had a vision? God just had a vision that says, Yeah, Cornelius, yeah, Acts 10. We can go to it and give you the proper understanding. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So he asked, why did God do that? This is what he says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my way, saith the Lord. And what are God's ways? Hosea 14 and 9. What are God's ways? We're going to find out God's ways. He gives a commandment, and we do what he say. That's simple. That's all we do. Read what you got. Hosea 5. I'm sorry, 14 and 9. <coughs> it's simple if we just humble down. That's all That's all the most I want us to do, just humble down. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse and, 9. Hey, and somebody find me this, the precept in Acts 10, so we have it ready. Somebody find me that. Hosea chapter 14 verse 9. Who is wise and he shall understand these things. Prudent and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. The ways of the Lord are what? The ways of the Lord are right. So the Bible says that the ways of the Most High God, they are, that's the right way. Right. And what is the right way? Just in case you wasn't sure, give me Deuteronomy 6 and 17. Just in case you wasn't sure. Bring it up. We're going to get the full understanding. All right? Give me what you got. Deuteronomy 6 and 17. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 17. Ye shall diligently keep the commandment. Shall do what? Diligently keep the commandment. Read of the Lord your God Read. and his testimonies and his statutes uh -huh. which he had commanded thee and thou shalt do that which is right thou shalt what? shall do that which is right so the ways of God are right and the right things are the commandments That's right. I understand that thing alright now what you got? I'm, st I'm still dealing with Acts 10 Acts 10 11 10 11 okay you had a question real quick give me Acts 10 11 hold it What's your question? Okay, I'll pray to the Most High. Now we're gonna deal with um, 
Acts 10 and 11, okay? All right, read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 11. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. So a voice appeared unto him and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now, I want to refresh your memory really, really quick. We read in 1 Corinthians 12 and 2 that it says that ye were Gentiles, meaning what? Do, do, do Israelites... Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, right? So do Israelites... Think about normal Gentiles, right? Do Israelites congregate with Gentiles on the normal? No. They have no dealings with them. Now read what you got again, and I'm going to get you up to speed. What's not right? Yeah, that's what we're supposed to be. We were commanded to do this. You probably heard that like in church or something like that. You, that ain't out the Bible. It said we're supposed to do that. All right, you got that in Luke? Luke 14, 23? Is that what I want? So what? I got a, I got a lot of questions, man. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. We still dealing with acts. You got to be step by step. I'll be out here all night. Literally. I will. Any question you got, I'm staying out here for you. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges. Who are the servants, the children of Israel? We are the servants, according to uh, Leviticus 25 and 55. That's we are the servants. Right. He said what? Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That's what we're doing. Compel means to do what? Use the scriptures to pull the people in, to bring them into the Most High in Christ. All right? Go back to Acts 10. Read what you got. Now, to set it up, remember, hold that. Give me um, Isaiah 7, when it says, not a people, and then give me Lamentations 4, 17 again. All right, we're going to set this up. So you had a split between the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel. And you know about this called the uh, southern kingdom of Judah, the circumcision. Those are the ones who what? Continue to keep God's laws. While you had the northern kingdom of Israel fall into idolatry. They were cut off to be what? Not a people. All right, read this real quick in Isaiah 7. Yeah. The book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is reason. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. It says Ephraim shall be broken, so it should not be a people anymore. Meaning what? They will no longer be considered the nation of Israel. That's right. Give me, hold that, give me First, uh, first Kings 11 to show why it happened, to show why the split even happened. You ever heard of King Solomon? Who, uh, who's his father? What do you know about King Solomon? King David. Exactly, King David's son. King Solomon was the wisest man to ever, to ever live, all right? Now, he, he sinned against God by doing what? Marrying other women right. of other nations. You familiar with that? A little bit? Verse 1. We're going to catch you up just a little bit. Watch this. Because it's got to make sense once we get to Acts. Okay? Watch this. First Kings chapter 11 verse 1. Uh -huh. But King Solomon loved many strange women. You see that? Remember strange means Gentile women. Those who are outside of the nation of Israel. Read. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Uh-huh. Woman of the Moabites. Now it's going to list. The Moabites are the so-called Chinese today. Read. Ammonite. The Japanese. Read. Edomite. Edomites are the so-called white people today. Read. Zidonian. Africans. And Hittite. Africans. Read. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel. What did he say? He shall not go into them. So the Most High God, he's against interracial marriage. Right. right. He said we shall not deal with the other nations. Right. Now, jump up to the verse where he says because of that, there's going to be a split. Read that. First Kings chapter 11 verse 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee. So he says, I'm going to rend the kingdom from you. Meaning what? He's going to take a part of the kingdom from King Solomon because of his sin. All right? Read. 
and will give it to thy servant. Read. Notwithstanding, in the days I will not do it for David thy father's sake. So because the most I got, he loved King David. All right, that was that was his right hand man, King David. Even though he had Uriah the Hittite killed, he still loved King David. Right. All right, so he said, you know what? I'm not going to take the whole kingdom away from you, Solomon, because of your father. All right. Now let's read on. Let's find out what he gave to him, what he left for him. Read. But I will rent it out of the hand of thy son. Read. How be it? I will not rent away all the kingdom. So he said, I ain't going to take all the kingdom away from you. Read. But will give one tribe to thy son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Just like we read that in 2 Chronicles 6 and 6, he has chosen Jerusalem. And who inhabits Jerusalem? Judah. That's the tribe who inhabits Jerusalem. So he said, you know what? I'm going to leave the southern kingdom for you. But the northern kingdom, they're going to be split. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 7 and 8 to get some understanding. Why did this come about? How did this come about? Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 8. Uh -huh. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Rezin. Is Rezin. Rezin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. That it be what? That it be not a people. Because it had to fulfill the prophecy in 1 Kings 11. So the kingdom split. Now give me um, Hosea 4 17 again. Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. Now when you read about Peter's dream, it's going to make sense. You ain't going to be thinking, this ain't got nothing to do with pork. This ain't got nothing to do with kangaroo. No, 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 no. Got something to do with something else. We're going to find out. Read what you got. Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Do what? Let him alone. Because they became Gentiles. So the southern kingdom of Israel no longer dealt with Ephraim and the other ten tribes. Right. Understand that, first and foremost. Now, let's go to Acts 10 and 11. Watch this. Acts chapter 10 and verse 11. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 11. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to earth, wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And fowls of the air. So he's just explaining the vision. Set, setting the stage. That's all he's doing. Read. And there came a voice to him. Rise, Peter. Kill and eat. Uh -huh. But Peter said, Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So Peter just says, Lord, I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, where did Peter get that from? Give me Leviticus 11 and 43. Where did he get that from? He got it from the laws of God. Right. Because we, there is a difference between a clean beast and an unclean beast. A swine is, guess what? It's an unclean beast. Right. So he's saying, hey, Lord, hey. We don't do that. We Israelites. Why would you do this? He's, he's trying to make some sense of it. Is that what I want? Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 11, uh, 46. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. This is the law of beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. Let's go back to Acts. Let's go back to Acts. Pick up where you left off. Acts chapter 10 verse 14. But Peter, but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Showing you what? That our forefathers kept the laws of God. Right. That's what it's showing you right there. Read. Verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. You know what? I got a quick question. And this is going to help you out. When it comes to Leviticus, right? Those are the laws that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai, right? Now, give me, hold that. Give me Hebrews 6 and 18. So if the Most High God told Moses, right? Keep in mind. He told Moses to the children of Israel, they should not eat any unclean beasts. Would God change that? He'd be contrary That'll make him a liar, right? Read this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 18. Uh -huh. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Read that again. That by two immutable things 
in which it was impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So you can get all of that thought out of your head about you thinking he's telling you to eat an unclean beast. That's not what he's talking about. Right. Let's go back to Acts 10. Read what you got. Acts 10, chapter 14. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And a voice spake unto him again the second time. What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. Uh -huh. This was done twice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which are sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house. All right, Simon Peter. So after the vision, uh, Cornelius let, uh, headed to Simon Peter's house. Jump up to 22. Read that. Acts chapter 10, verse 22. Uh -huh. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion. And centurion. Read it again from the top. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear the word of thee. So he was sent by the Most High God to Simon Peter's house right after Simon Peter had that dream. Jump down to verse 28. Acts chapter 10 verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing. Listen close. Now's not the time to go to the phone. Here's the point right here. Read what you got. Verse 28, and he said unto them, Ye know how it was an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one another nation. One of another nation. Read it again. Here's the point. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing. You remember unlawful? Unclean? That's the vision that he had. He saw all men of beasts. He saw the unclean beasts. The most I said, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. Because that was against the law to deal with the Gentiles. Right, right. Because he said, leave them alone. Uh, Read verse 28 again. Acts chapter 10, verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. But God had shown me that I should not call any man. Any what? Any man. Pork chop. Any man. Pig feet. Any man. Read. Common or unclean. That's the understanding right, right there. Right. It's talking about our brothers and sisters from the northern kingdom. Right. So just in case you're confused, read verse 30. chapter 10 verse 35 but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him Great. the word which God sent unto the children of Israel of who? children of Israel that's the understanding of Acts 10 he's talking about the division the split spoken of in 1 Kings 11 now he's saying Matthew 15 to 24 he didn't just come for the southern kingdom right. or the circumcision or the Jews he came for the whole nation of Israel that's, right. that's the purpose of Jesus Christ to bring us all back into the fold right. read what you got Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24 uh -huh. but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel that's what Jesus Christ came and said he said he's only sent for the lost sheep why are we lost? Jeremiah 15, 6. Why are we lost? Think about it. Why were you lost? Because we've been taught wrong. We've been scattered. We've been lied to. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 6. Uh -huh. My people. Whose people? My people. That's the Israelites. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. My people has been lost sheep. Have been what? Lost sheep. Read. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Those Christian pastors, those politicians, right, right. those presidents. Right, right. Read it again. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. 
They have turned them away on the mountains. They have led our people here and there, but nobody's teaching us to teach them um, to keep God's laws. What you got, brother? Yes, sir. What you got? So you said. Yes, sir. So that meeting, yeah, they didn't. Ain't the Bible say that you gotta. Work out your own salvation? Yeah, yeah, we read that. Hold that. Give me that uh, Philippians 2.12. Watch this. I'm going to read what you say. I want to make sure we filter through the scriptures. So you sitting there listening to what they teach you, and you're not trying to go and study yourself. Right, right, right. You ain't right, right. You. They, they right. gave you the information. But guess what? That's what's happened to our people. You still can't get across the fact that our people are being led astray. That's the right. facts. You understand right. what I'm saying? A lot of people don't follow Right. A lot of people just followers, and those are the what? The lost sheep. Right. Guess what? If you're not keeping God's commandments, you're a lost sheep too. Right. It don't matter regardless. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? Watch, watch this. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, if ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. With fear and trembling. It says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 2 Timothy 2.15. You know? Exactly. Work out your own salvation. All right? With fear and trembling. Read what you got. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh -huh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. So it says, you have to study to show yourself approved unto God. Right. Now, when you study the word of God, what are you studying? What is it good for? Re like, read this. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And this is what it's good for. Read. And is profitable for doctrine. With that fear and trembling, right? That doctrine, which is going to steer you in the right direction. Instead of what? Steering you away, being a lost sheep, right? Uh, for reproof. For reproof means what? Whether you're going this way, I need you to fear this way. I need to get on the straight and narrow, right? Read. For correction. For correction. That's why we out here. We're raising the finger. We're correcting y'all, showing you, hey, hey, brothers, that's not the right understanding. Right. This is the right understanding. Read. For instruction in righteousness. Instruction is right. Instruction in righteousness is instruction on keeping God's commandments correctly. Read. That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be perfect. Give me Matthew 5 and 48 and Surah 21 and 1. Because you have to understand first and foremost, the Most High God commands each and every last one of us to be perfect. Right. Not in the aspect of being the best three-point shooter. No, that ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about perfection according to God's laws. And guess what? The quicker you start, the better chance you got to reach that perfection. You understand that? Read what you got. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Uh -huh. So he says, be ye therefore perfect. Give me John 5 and 14, then Sirach 21 and 1. Watch this. This is what he's talking about in regards to that perfection. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. So this was the man who was lame. He was afflicted with an infirmity. The Most High God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to heal him. Read it again from the top. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Uh -huh. Sin no more. Do what? Sin no more. So Rock 21 and 1. Sin no more. That's what he wants from every last one of us. That's what he means when he says, be perfect. He means sin no more. And then give me that in James 1. Entire wanting nothing. All right, watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 1. Uh -huh. My son, has thou sinned? So, be real with yourself. Have you sinned before? Right. We've all we've all sinned at one point, right? Read it again from the top. My son, has thou sinned? Read. Do so no more. That's what he wants you to do. Give me Sirach 17 and 23. Bring it up. Understand this thing. He understands that, yeah, we've been simple, but that's how much he loves us. Right. That's why he sent his only begotten son to die for the nation of Israel. Right. Because, yeah, I know you sinned, but hey, don't sin no more. And most I also understands it's process too, but don't play around with it. Don't not play around with it. Read what you got. 
Sirach chapter 17 verse 23. Uh -huh. Afterward, he will rise up and reward them and render their recompense upon their heads. Read. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience. So it says for those who repent, he granted them a return and he comforts those. Meaning what? Hey, you know what? I'm going to take you in. Those who fell to patience, meaning what? You didn't know no better. So you was at this city. That's why the most, that's, y'all got to understand this thing. The most high God, that's, he the only God on the face of the earth. But guess what? He our God. Right. Right. He's merciful and he will take you back in yes. if you're trying to get right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org